this paper, I am trying to investigate uh, one of the dimensions of inclusive growth is that no group uh, based on ethnicity, religion, etc., should be left behind uh, in the improvement of well-being. It's a, it's a study of poverty and ethnicity among uh, black uh, South Africans. Uh, this is part of, of a larger uh, agenda and research about differences by race and ethnicity in several countries, in Brazil, some other Latin American countries, the US, China, and in South Africa. Uh, in terms of differences in income distribution, mostly on the poverty uh, levels and uh, outcomes in the labor market. In, in one of these papers, I previously analyzed the case of the huge white uh, uh, black differential uh, in South Africa, showing uh, how much of this gap could be explained by uh, <clears throat> Africans having uh, lower endowments or lower access to education, uh, living in rural, in most rural and uh, poorest areas of the country, uh, etc. Uh, in this case, I moved to analyze uh, differences, but within African. Uh, within Africans, so blacks in, in, in the country, uh, the, uh, taking into account the different ethno-linguistic uh, groups. Uh, so the aim is to explain uh, if there are, there are significant differences between poverty among uh, black ethnic groups, and I advance that the answer that is to my uh, view there, there is significant uh, differentials comparing with differentials in other countries. They are very similar or even larger than the white black, the black white uh, poverty gap, for example, in the U.S. or Brazil. <coughs> uh, there is only, or, or there is also not only differences in poverty rates, but also in the probability of uh, entering into poverty, falling into poverty. Uh, that. Then the second point is trying to, can I say something about these differentials, where they come from? And uh, so I asked to what extent these differentials can be associated with the different characteristics of the groups, so this uh, kind of a compositional effect depending on the access to, to the different uh, endowments. Uh, are, is this because some groups have more children because they live in rural areas or in townships or uh, they have lower access to education, uh, lower employment rates, etc. And the answer that is yes, most of the gap uh, is explained, especially when we concentrate on persistent poverty, uh, much less when we look at temporary poverty. <coughs> and the third objective is to identify what of these characteristics are the most important. And I will show that this is the accumulation of several disadvantages uh, across these groups, but uh, with some differences between these, uh, each of the ethnic groups. The data is the first two waves of uh, the National Income Dynamics Study produced by the University of Cape Town. So I use a cross-section of wave one in 2008 and a balanced panel of waves one and two uh, when they were re-interviewed again in 2010-2011. Uh, I concentrate on differences on poverty rates using the uh, standard uh, poverty line used in other studies in South Africa. And I will look also at the dynamics of poverty, uh, uh, separating those who were poor in 2008 and see if they were poor again when they, in the second interview or not. And then I call the first ones persistent poor and the second ones temporary poor even if this is a, an abuse of language because I don't know what happened in the middle. Uh, these are the ethnic groups I'm going to analyze. Uh, Kosa, Sulu, uh, and I joined Sesoto, uh, those, uh, Soto and Suana. Uh, so uh, they, in order to have significant uh, groups, uh, large uh, groups, uh, you can see that there is some geographical disparity of these groups. They tend to be concentrated in their traditional areas, even if there are uh, people of all groups everywhere. Uh, looking at the 
per capita monthly uh, household income uh, in runs, you can see that there are different income distributions when we partition uh, the, uh, the group of Africans by uh, ethnicity, with uh, Cosa being the poorest group, Sulu being in, uh, uh, very close to Cosa, and Soto Swana being the relatively affluent groups in, uh, among Africans. Then other groups that I'm not going to analyze uh, lie in the, in the middle of between, in between both uh, uh, other groups. <coughs> Well, this is the summary indicators, the average income, the percentage of the population. Uh, you can see that there is a significant difference in the median income. And what, in what I'm going to concentrate, there is a significant gap in poverty rates. So poverty rates for Sulu is 62%, for Sotoswana, 41%. This is like 50% higher, that is uh, uh, larger than the many ethnic differentials in, in other countries. So obviously, the, the difference within African groups are very small if you compare with the differences with other racial groups in South Africa, whites and uh, color or uh, Asian Indian. <coughs> uh, this was somehow the analysis of uh, the previous paper. But I think that also the, the differences within, the, uh, within Africans are very important and need some, some explanation. The methodology I'm going to use is to explain uh, this uh, differential in proportions, in head counts, uh, using a blinder Oaxaca type of approach, in particular it's an extension to analyze the differences in proportions. Where the, the original was uh, aimed to analyze the difference in means uh, of continuous variables. So I estimate for each group a poverty uh, regression, a logic uh, uh, regression uh, of probability of being poor based on household characteristics. Uh, then I know that the headcount ratio is just the predicted value, the average predicted value of the uh, probability of being poor. And then I use uh, this uh, to decompose the differential in uh, the poverty of one group and the other as uh, is the same as the difference in the predicted values, and then I use a counterfactual distribution uh, in which I give the characteristics of the affluent group, the reference group, Sotoswana, to the, my, the other group, uh, either Sulu or uh, Cos, while keeping the around uh, beta, so the around uh, coefficient effects. So this is some, how the counterfactual, what would happen uh, uh, if uh, I, uh, one group had the characteristics of the other group, but keeping their, the impact of these characteristics on the probability of being poor. And using this counterfactual, uh, uh, subtracting and adding the, this counterfactual, uh, we generate this Oaxaca blinder decomposition. One is the characteristics effect, that is the effect of switching the characteristics while keeping the coefficients, and the coefficients effect, that is what happens when you keep the characteristics and switch the coefficients. So the first is what, in what I'm concentrating because it's the part that we really explain, that is uh, how much of the differential can be explained by some groups having uh, lower endowments. Uh, then I produce the detail, uh, the composition, that is to attribute what is the contribution of each uh, factor, and I use for that the, even the McPherson and June uh, approach because the fact that logic is nonlinear generates some problems and they make up uh, and a, a linearized approximation. The characteristics I'm controlling for are basically location, so urban formal or urban informal, they live in tribal, tribal authority area or rural formal. Uh, <coughs> some demographic variables, so head marital status, migration, age, sex, the number of children, the number of adults, uh, education, uh, not only education of the head, but also education of uh, other members of the household. Uh, labor, again, la the labor status of the head, but also the dependency ratio to take into account what happens with the other members of the household. And uh, other variables to take into account the, the specific um, structure of this data. Uh, the, take into account the date of interviews, so the quarter and the time span between both interviews in the case of the panel, and also for analyzing entry uh, into poverty, the distance from the poverty line. Well, and uh, these are the results for uh, 2008, so for the cross section. Uh, this is the result for COSA, these are the results for Sulu. So this is the poverty rate in each group, 
Kosa and Sulu, the poverty rate of uh, the reference group, in this case Soto Suana, 41%, and this is the differential that I want to explain. Here are the standard errors. Uh, as you can see, I can explain in both cases most of the differential. So most of the differential can be attributed to differences in the basic characteristics of households. It's like uh, 80%, more than 80% and near 90% in the case of uh, Sulu. Uh, and what factors are most important in both groups? Well, they have something in common, but there are some, some things that are specific of uh, each group. They have in common, for example, the important role of education. So Kos and Sulu have lower levels of education, and this explains uh, about four percentage points of the gap, so, which is a, 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 a large uh, uh, differential, about 20, more than 20% uh, of uh, the, the observed differential. So this is similar in both groups. Uh, uh, what is more specific of uh, Sulu is the, the huge importance of the number of children that explains about eight percentage points of the differential. So what is 40% of uh, the whole uh, gap that is observed. Uh, this is the combination of uh, having more children and uh, having a higher impact of uh, the children on the probability uh, of being poor. Uh, in the case of cost, there is, this is also important, explained about three percentage points, but much less than in the case of Sulu. Uh, also in the case of Sulu, uh, location, so uh, the, the fact that they live in a larger proportion in tribal authority areas and in informal, uh, well, basically here is in tribal authority areas, uh, explains about another four percentage points uh, differential, or 20%. In the case of uh, COSA, uh, they also have larger proportions in tribal authority areas and in informal uh, urban areas uh, explains about two. Uh, what is more important for COSA compared to Sulu is uh, the labor attachment of uh, household members. That is explained about five, uh, five percentage points here and uh, higher than in the case of Sulu. Other demographic factors are important but to a lower extent. Well, then I want to look also at the dynamics of poverty, so to take into account the fact that we have this second interview, so we know who remain poor in, in the second uh, survey and who exit and who enter uh, poverty during that time. As you can see, this is the differential in poverty rates that we uh, saw, uh, so uh, poor in 2008. This is what I call persistence, so poor in both periods. This is the temporary poverty rate, so those who are, uh, were poor but only in the first period. This is the entry rate and the exit rate into poverty. Uh, as you can see, there is the gap in persistent poverty is similar to the gap in uh, poverty. Uh, and th th there is an important thing here, that is that there is also a, a huge differential in the entry rates. There are no substantial differentials between exit rates of these groups, but uh, the differential comes from the entry rate. So Kosa uh, uh, and Sulu, they have a much larger probability of entering poverty than Soto Suana, and that might uh, help to explain their higher poverty rate. So I uh, do the same type of analysis, but looking at this persistent temporary and entry, uh, persistent poverty, temporary poverty, and entry rate. So these are the, the, the values, again, for each group, uh, for the reference, and this is the differential I want to explain. Uh, in this case, we, uh, I, I produce here, this is the result we saw earlier, so it's the cross section 2008. This is the same, but with using only the balance panel, so I expect to have the same results. The difference comes from the, the attrition that is not corrected by using attrition weights. Uh, but I think these results are quite similar. And this is what the result for persistent poverty, temporary poverty, and for the entry rate. And uh, as you can see, uh, the unexplained part is very, is very similar in the case of the persistent poverty rate. So most of what we explain is actually the difference between persistent uh, poor. And in the case of temporary poverty, we explain something in the case of Sulu, but nothing basically in the case of COSA. So 
uh, is what re really remains to be explained. And in the case of the entry rates, that there are also significant gaps, we explain all the gap in the case of Sulu, and nothing, or only a third of the, the entry rate in the case of COSA. So in the case of COSA, it's uh, uh, more difficult to know what is happening in the case of uh, temporary poverty or people entering poverty. Uh, <coughs> What are the factors, the relevant factors? As we saw, uh, I mean, there, the, in the case of persistent poverty, uh, the factors are very similar to those we saw later, so earlier. Uh, there are some, some things that, there were some differences before that now disappear when you concentrate on, uh, on uh, persistent poverty. For example, in the case of location, that they look much more similar now than they did before. Education, still the, the, the most important factor. Labor. Uh, uh, is uh, also very important, and, uh, and the, the difference in the number of uh, children. Yeah. In the case of temporary poverty, for COSA we don't explain anything. In the case of uh, Sulu, we see that uh, there are some, uh, the most, I mean, we explain about 3.7 percentage points, and most is explained by education. So education explains higher uh, temporary poverty for Sulu, but not for uh, and this is basically the main explanation. And there are some demographics like the, the head, the, the age head of the head, that also is somehow explicative. And regarding the entry rate, uh, in the case of COSA, we don't explain anything. In the case of Sulu, we explain, we can say that it's basically a compositional effect. Some part comes from the fact, from the, the design of the survey. Uh, some part also become, uh, or comes from the fact that Sulu are closer to the poverty rate, so it's easier for them to fall into poverty than for uh, Soto and, and Suana. And um, also the demographics uh, are especially important uh, here. Uh, you have basically the, the number of children that explain also more than one and a half uh, percentage uh, points differential, but also uh, the, the, the different family structure seems to be very important uh, here. So, but basically it's uh, demographics and also the uh, location. Uh, well, I also look at the differential of trends in time, but uh, I cannot explain much. I mean, I compare in 2008 with 1993 with the uh, poverty studies uh, with another similar survey, the PSLD, that is very similar, but uh, with a different income definition, so I have to homogenize uh, the definition of income. For this reason, the values for 2008 are different from before. And what we see is that the reduction in poverty uh, for COSA is very similar to the reduction in poverty for Soto Suana. And, uh, however, the reduction in poverty for Sulu is much smaller, but uh, the difference is not statistically significant, so uh, we cannot be, be very sure that, uh, that the gap really increase. So just concluding, I think that understanding the inequalities across ethnic groups might, might be important to better know what is happening or what is going on in the income distribution of South Africa, and that even if most attention is concentrated on the black-white differential, I think that there is room also to analyze what is going on within uh, the different ethnic uh, black uh, groups. Uh, difference in poverty rates are to a large extent associated with uh, Kosa and Sulu having an accumulation of disadvantages in location, demographic structure, education, and labor market, and with some distinctive uh, features, uh, the, more, the higher importance of the labor market for Kosa, because they are a more urban group, and the higher importance of the demographics, especially the number of children in the case of uh, Sulu. I also think that it's important to take into account the different time uh, profile of, uh, of the poor, because uh, we explain better differences in uh, uh, persistent poverty than in temporary uh, poverty, and also that it's important to analyze the, the increasing gap, even if that the, the, the gap increase for Sulu, we are not sure if, uh, uh, because this is not statistically significant. And there are also some changes in, in the variables explaining in, in both years. So thank you very much.